All right, everything's fixed on the compound now. I'm just double checking. Uh, what I did is I took the uh, the part off the lathe. I just took the whole chuck off and left it in the chuck. So that's uh, within a thousandth. Probably about, see, that's right on the line. That goes up to about halfway. So it's within a half a thou, which is plenty for what we're doing here. So let me get you back out and we'll get back to work on this. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish what we uh, were starting on before the compound broke. I'm gonna part off this end here. Um, this is gonna leave about an inch and a half um, and the total length from here to here is going to end up being an inch and a quarter, but I'm going to part it a little bit long and we'll face it to length. Turn at 200 RPMs at about a 5,000 speed right here. I've got the compound set to uh, 15 degrees. That's what my initial plan is. And it looks like I'll be able to. I'm a little bit close there, but if I line up to there, I've got enough clearance here where I'm not going to hit. And this is all going to be feeding by hand with the compound. guys up so you can get a little bit better view so I'm gonna be cutting this angle with the compound rest now I'm starting it at 15 because I think 15 is gonna be um, not steep enough I think it's only gonna take it to about here and I don't have a measuring system set up here that reads beyond 60 degrees. So I'm going to start at 15 and to get 15, I'm just using my drill gauge here, putting it flush up against the part and then lining up the edge of the compound rest to get my angle set. It's not precise but it's close enough for what we're going to do because we're going to start cut until we get to this edge and then we'll make adjustments from there to take it to where we need it. And I've got to readjust my tool height because I had it over on the Atlas while I was remaking the tool post mount. So let me reset and get this lined up. Alright. Now we're set back up. So these tools under there. Now let's see how it goes.
Okay, we want this section to be about an inch and a quarter, but we're going to have this section here is going to go, I'm going to cut in a little bit, so it's going to go in like that, and then our, our shape's going to come out from there. And I think that that gave us about three eighths, and that's set at fifteen degrees. So I'm going to go to. about seven best I can and see how that looks. All right. As I was thinking about this I decided it's probably better to cut in however far I'm going to cut in here first and then get my angle set. So. So it's getting there slowly but surely. Alright, so that's got it pretty close. Um, it's got it in about, I think, as far as I want to go. Um, there's still a little bit of chatter mark on, on this side here. But this is all going to be machined down. So I'm not worried about the chatter there. I've got this set as close as I can to seven degrees now. good there.
All right, I got the outside profile cut. Um, next, what I need to do is drill it out to the bore diameter and then cut the inside angle. So that's what I'm going to do now. the bore diameter is cut, <clears throat> I can come in with a boring bar and slowly kiss away all this material to get the wall thickness down. And we're almost done. Alright, we're ready to go here. Clear some of these chips off real quick. That's good there. The surface finish looks a little bit rougher than I was hoping, but it's plenty smooth enough. You can't really feel the grooves. So, just need to readjust my compound.
So we're good. Now we can pull it out and throw it up in the uh, milling machine and we're going to put three holes for uh, three set screws. She is. All I'm going to do is put three set screws in the on one part of it. It's going to end up being the bottom for the customer, and then we'll polish the rest of the outside, and then uh, do a cold bluing, and it'll be ready to mail out. All right, I've got the uh, brake checked up in the vise here. Um, I have it sticking off a little bit to this side just so I can get uh, zero. I couldn't put it through this way because the uh, cone hits the edge of the vice jaw. So I zeroed here, came up onto the middle, came over, zeroed here, and I'm right on the edge. And I just did the measurements for the three holes. The first one's going to be at 7187. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighteen, Right, I've got a uh, just a regular uh, center drill in here just to spot it with. a second to get my tap set up here. Alright, I've got my tap set up here.
All right, I've got the uh, the brake hole degreased and cleaned up. Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna start on the bluing. I don't like the uh, chemicals in here getting all over me, so first thing I'm gonna do is glove up. find the part that I hid. Alright, now for this bluing, it says to leave it on for one minute and then clear it off with cold water and you polish it in between with some steel wool. So I've got everything I need to go. I've got a cup of water sitting off to my side. I give this a good coating here. Now, I like to keep kind of rolling it around when I blue parts to just keep the coating of the uh, chemical on the uh, on the part that I'm making that way it stays even all the way around And usually you have to do this three or four times, but as long as you keep rolling it around, just once gets a pretty dang good coating on it. If you can see, I mean, it instantly turns it black. And the chemicals keep working the entire time. There's your timer. You're going to dip this bad boy in some water. Now I'm going to take it off camera here for a second. Just go hit it with the air compressor to completely dry it out. As you can see, it's pretty dang black already. Just take some real fine steel wool and just really lightly clean it up with the steel wool. And it kind of polishes the, uh, the bluing.
I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera for you guys, but you can kind of start to see a little bit of change once you polish it off a little bit. It is when it gets that kind of bluish hue to it. And then you can see the spots where you know you need a little bit more buffing. But I'll just do that uh, with a completely raw piece like this. The instructions say you need you know five to seven coats or something crazy. With this stuff I usually get a pretty good coating after just two coats. I think the most I've ever had to do was three. Um, and it was just to to darken it up and that piece was a piece that had been welded on. It was two different materials. Now the biggest mistake that people make when they blue like this is um, with the cleaning. If you don't get all the grease off, you'll get all kinds of swirls and absence and voids where it just didn't it didn't take the bluing just you could you'll be able to see you know where the bluing just didn't hold. And that's what ended up happening with that other piece. I had to do it again because it just didn't quite clean it all the way up. And so there's a couple swirl marks. So I, I cleaned it all off, just polished it with the steel wool. I degreased it in the middle of bluing it, reapplied the bluing, and it, it cleared it up. But these chemicals are horrible horrible chemicals to get on anything you don't want corroded because that's what it's doing is it's corroding the metal into that blue you know if you clean finger you can see it's you know it wipes and gets nasty Take it over and blow it off the air compressor again. then just buff it out again and it'll it'll get to a point if you just keep applying the the bluing it'll, it'll get to a point where it just stops you know it doesn't doesn't change the uh, the look of the metal anymore And that's when you that's when you know you're you're good you don't need to put any more on the other thing that's really important is uh, oiling it up after and what I usually do is I use um, 30 weight detergent free oil and I'll coat the entire part with that leave it overnight and then wipe off the excess and that usually gets a uh, a really nice deep soak into it. Um, I've seen people use all different kinds of oils and do heat treatments, and you know they heat the heat the part up to so many degrees, you know, like 150 or 200 degrees, and then they'll coat it with oil, 
and let the oil soak in and you know you get better penetration on the oil that way but I've never had a problem doing it my way never had anybody complain about it afterwards See that's looking pretty good. I'll probably do just one more coat on here. And I think that'll be more than enough. I can't stress how important it is when you blew anything to get it completely degreased because any little bit of grease will just ruin your, your blowing job and it'll all be for nothing. Set it down there so I can get to stay upright. I've seen guys use this, and what I use is the uh, the Birchwood KC Super Blue, and it works pretty dang good. The uh, regular Perma Blue works good. The Super Blue just gets a little bit darker, a little bit faster. Seems to be a little bit stronger chemicals in there, and. It uh, does a really good job, really, really quick to get a part completely coated.
The other thing that's really important is to do this out in the area where you have really good ventilation because this stuff is not only is it just a nasty chemical, but it smells absolutely horrid. And you don't want to piss off your wife and blew anything inside the house. All right, there she is, she's all done. I'm just gonna give it a good cleaning with the air compressor, make sure all this uh, steel wool pieces are cleaned off of it. And then uh, coat it with oil, and then uh, package it for shipment. And that's it, job's done.